Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Thanks. And now your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders. I'm Addie Thomas. And I am Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us. Well, it has been... You know, we've been doing a whole lot of different things on the podcast lately. We've had the Star Wars RPG. We've had Logan. We've had uh, some comics that we've reviewed. But it's it's cool to also, like, bring it back to, like, what's happening in the Star Wars universe. So today we're going to kind of, like, cover a lot of different areas of the Star Wars universe. Rebels, comics, books, just what's happening in our perspective. Do we like some of these expansions to the galaxy? Do we not? We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But a quick update on the weight loss challenge, Ben. Oh, How are you feeling? Oh, I feel good, dude. Do you really? I weighed myself before I came over. Oh, did you? <laughs> I'm back down to my original starting weight. I'm down to 135, baby. So you only have... That was v- very underwhelming. Oh, dude. Uh, considering I was up seven? That's still very underwhelming. I feel pretty good about it that, like, in a week, I was able to lose seven pounds. I guess whatever whatever makes you feel good about yourself. I it's, feel you great right now because I am coming back with a vengeance. Are Hashtag you? Team Ben is going to win this thing. Bet on it. Bet on it. Go to Vegas. Go to Vegas and put bet the house. I'm going to win it Weren't all. Weren't you the one who talked about wanting to order a pizza today? Mm-hmm. For you. I wasn't going to eat it. Sure. I've been eating soup. I've been exercising. Uh-huh. I've been taking vitamins. I've been drinking water. I feel great. All right. All right. Getting lots of sleep. I don't believe that. For yeah, I'm not second. getting lots of sleep at all. Yeah, <laughs> I, had, I did drink a glass of water the other day, though. A glass of water <laughs> the other day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is this is your hopes hopes and dreams, Team Ben. Seriously. <laughs> Whatever. How much weight did you lose? I'm I'm still down to 269. So you didn't lose any recently? No. Nope. Are you just holding steady? I've Treading been, water while I'm ma- gaining on I've you? I've been maintaining the habits. I'm just going to stay stay focused. Yep. This yep. is where I always That's usually good. like. Yeah, just plateau there. Just stay there. You're fine. I always, I always plateau here, and this is where I stop. So instead, I'm just staying focused yep. and staying steady. No, I, lo- I love so. it. I love it. You, you, you do you. Yeah, that's right. That's mm-hmm. right. You just stay right there. Meanwhile, I'm shedding weight like I'm going out of business. No, you like aren't. it's yes, no, I you am. Aren't. I am. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just take a, took a major dump before you weighed yourself. No, you know what I didn't? I should have. I probably would have lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you can follow the Weight Loss Challenge. It's all on our website, certainpov.com. While you're there, you can check out Patreon. You can check out more. All oh, on you know website. who joined us? Akid. Oh, Akid right. joined us in the Weight Loss Challenge today. Nice. Hashtag nice, yeah. Team Akid if you're in on that. Yeah, we got to. He, is he his own team or is he joining a team? He didn't, jo- he didn't like join. He just said, he he just said hey, can I challenge. join you guys? Yeah. So we need to work that out, figure out what that means. That's but true. yeah, yeah uh, he, be could be as a, he could be like a third party. He could be. He could be our Gary horse. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's already kind of fit. I don't. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's kind of cheating yeah. already. Like he's, he's got to lose well, like it's three. It's a healthy lifestyle thing. It's not just a weight loss challenge, anyway. So if you say so. Uh, why, why, you know, like you have so much less weight to. to yeah, lose. I know, but 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 you're, but, you're but according to Patreon, the, yeah. but according to Patreon, it's not total weight. It's how much weight is lost in a certain period of time, which we haven't designated yet. Oh, okay. So I do have a chance to win. So that's this. why you haven't designated it. So you waiting until you just hit. We your need lead. to figure that yeah. out. We need to have that. That's the next yeah. vote on. No, Patreon. it just feels like you're just fixing this in your favor. Nope. Ever well, since I, you no. suggested this. Well, of course, because that's what I do to beat you every single time, yeah. and we'll continue to do. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so you can find out more about that on our website, certainpov.com. All of that. Uh, you can find out about Patreon. You can share. All our social media links, you can share the podcast with other friends. All of that you can go and find at certainpov.com. Star Wars. So we've got uh, so we've got a, a number of things that have happened. Obviously, with the you know the outcome of of Carrie Fisher's death, now they're shifting a little bit more to getting ready for Last Jedi coming out at the end of this year. And one of the things that we've already heard about is, is there's some challenges already with with reshooting some of this movie now reshoots are kind of standard and to be expected but it feels like they're do you does do you get the impression that they're going to kill her off in this movie so i that, mean you have to right yeah. like you ha- you can't have her like lingering on right she's too big of a character and she yeah and, she, and apparently she had a major role to play in the entire trilogy arc 
Right. So, yeah, I mean, you have to do some rewrites. And we talked about this before. So I'm not shocked at all to find out that they're try, you know, going back reshooting and trying to figure out how to make this work and how to retcon it all together so that it still feels coherent. I'm also not panicking about this at all. Like, we heard about massive reshoots going on with Rogue One. Right, you know, through through that process too, and everybody's like, "Oh, this film's a mess," and, you know, blah 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 blah. And while I didn't love that film, what they shot was totally fine, and the scenes that they reshot were totally fine. It was no big deal. Big budget movies like this reshoots aren't uncommon. Yeah. Like, it's not a reason to panic unless you're in the DC universe. I think a great you know perspective on that is i remember watching the lord of the rings like behind the scenes on the extended cuts and there's like really good detail like behind the scenes as far as like you know stuff they did with like audio effects and you know the soundtrack but reshoots were a pretty standard part and thank god they that that they happened because some of the decisions jackson made early on definitely needed to be reshot yeah you know and and reworked it it was just sort of a natural part of the process so yeah and and you know nobody nobody you know talks about the the lord of the rings movies really being bad movies necessarily so yeah 90 percent of like the big blockbuster movies out there have reshoots in them it's not and i'm pretty sure jj jj had re had reshoots i remember yeah that's right well so it's not a reason to panic and even for small friend like for small films i know a friend who's like you know doing like he, they have reshoots planned for their a small film because they you know they're going over the footage and they see okay may need a little you know an extra shot here and there or we missed you know, some extra lines or, yeah. just to fill out something because it just like when you sit down and you're, during the editing process you just don't have the right feel and you may want that little extra bit you know that that you need to to really fill out and to, to get the right pacing right. or yep. feel for uh, you know another retake of a line or whatever yeah so so yeah that that's what we're seeing there so now uh let, let's let's move on to sort of like uh the the books and comics have you been reading any uh star wars comics lately no i am one issue away from finishing the darth vader series i'm waiting for them to upload it to uh to uh marvel unlimited but my god you need to finish that i do uh, it's, it's been so crazy like my personal life has just been an utter disaster yeah it's like darth vader came in and just like force choked my life <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i do need to and i will uh, I'll probably sneak some in at work yeah <laughs> well seriously it's it's some there's some great material in that continuing to just kind of uh, examine. Well, I mean, it, it's if you if you loved that scene at the end of Rogue One with Vader, I mean, it's just more of that, but also more, you know, just the cunning of Vader. Like you, he is a much more fully realized villain, and you know, y- y- we get we get like I think Empire Strikes Back is is sort of that is, is the apex of Vader as a villain. Just how cunning he is, how fierce he is, how. How, how incredibly strong he is too. all of that, you know, return of the Jedi. He doesn't, you know, he it doesn't quite help the, the Vader image, but it, that, that was also the point of the story. So that, that it, it makes sense. But if you, if you really want badass Vader, this comic is the one to read and just some, some really cool internal moments where like him thinking about Obi-Wan and even Padme at one point that, makes for some really cool moments uh, as he's kind of navigating the empire and the treachery of co- competitors with him. So, how, how far, uh, how far into the story does it go? Does it go like, let's say I'm trying to remember. It it's after leave. new hope. It goes, it's after new hope. Yeah. Does it go right up to? No, Strikes because Back? I think that that's what three years. I think that gap is what three years. I want to say. Okay. Three, five years. Yeah. So it's definitely not it's all the way up. Yeah. Um, but it leads up to a pretty major moment that explains, you know, how Vader has one particular thing when he's in, um, when he when he's in Empire Strikes Back. Okay. I, I mean, it's no big deal if I reveal that. To be honest, it's how he gets the executor, his superstar. Oh, starter. okay, all right, cool. So, like that that one thing is explained. Okay, but you know, so it's not, it's not like a big plot. You know, but it is kind of cool to find out. Like, okay, this guy screwed up right. on the Death Star. Well, even in the mentality of having 
a super star destroyer because the super star destroyer it's i think i believe it's the first one for the imperials because it's sort of like it's because of the failure of the death star there's sort of a refocus on all right well let's let's get back to what we're good at <laughs> and it's these star destroyers but let's make this one really big one too <laughs> so <laughs> let's make it super yeah <laughs> that's great i mean that, and that that's great storytelling like that's little details like that little little pieces of lore that make the Star Wars universe kind of special, kind of like filling it out, coloring in between the lines a little bit and, and making it making it cool. I'll definitely read it. I, I've loved the ones that I've read so far. I think I got about halfway through the series mm -hmm. before I, I got distracted. Um, and I've loved it. The storytelling, like you said, is just fantastic. The writing of Vader and his motives and how he manipulates people is so good. So good. He's so, you like you never really thought about Vader as a manipulator. Yes. In the movies. Yeah. He was always just like a force of nature. Right. Pardon the pun. Uh so it's nice to see like that Sith m manipulation side of him and how he's learned from Palpatine those skills and uses them so well. So well. I I I've really liked it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. I'd also recommend checking out the Obi Wan and Anakin series. It's a it's a it's a just a five issue arc, but it's it's before Attack of the Clones. So this is when Obi Wan is has a young Anakin at it as his uh, as his Padawan, and it's just them on a mission. Uh, but it it also flashes to some moments with Obi Wan and Anakin and some of the problems Anakin has relating to other, to other padawans to his having issues with his with his rage and his jedi training or his attachment and his jedi training and also like little bits of mentorship from palpatine with with an, a, a very young anakin skywalker as well and it's, so it's really cool kind of planting the seeds for these different relationships and it makes the you know, not only the Palpatine and Anakin relationship so much stronger and much more interesting. So, any any has like so so Anakin's hesitation at not wanting to kill Palpatine right. makes even more sense. So it's not just about like well he wants to save Padme that there is such a strong friendship between him and Palpatine. Right, is really important, and uh, that's something that never that never comes across in the movies. You get a little bit of that in Clone Wars, but this how like this really sell, sells it a little bit more. That he has that that not just the favor, but that mentorship and that extra friendship with with Palpatine. But the relationship between him and Obi Wan is so much stronger. Like it may like for me, it makes that like. Yeah, I know it's a it's a very over the top moment, like you know where when when uh when Obi Wan you were cuts, my brother. It makes that line have a whole lot more meaning, I think. Did you? I sent that that link to you where there's like the super cut of yeah. of Luke and Obi Wan talking about. I had seen another version of that a couple months ago that I liked a little bit better because the the way they strung it along really like kind of focused in on some like good moments between the two of them too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not just like Obi-Wan kind of, of like, having to kill yeah, his best friend. And, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like it, it, it's, it's, I'm glad people have made those videos because it is like, it's, it's cool seeing like that little hesitation and Alec Guinness, Alec Guinness's performance of that. Like when you look at it, you're yeah, like, it's Oh, so, yeah. like it's so subtle, but it, you're like, Oh yeah. Like he's having flashbacks of, what really happened and is yeah. trying to like figure out how to navigate this right to Luke and not like just spoil like, Hey, your dad was a gigantic dick and I killed him, <laughs> right. but I didn't. Yeah. And he became an eager, even bigger dick. Well, cause he knows that this kid is also the hope for the galaxy. So like he understands he has to be very careful and there's like, it's not just the, the, the careful, but it all, I, Maybe maybe I'm over reading into you know into this moment, but it also you, you feel the weight of like the failure of Obi Wan in that hesitation mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, knowing that he that his pupil went dark, you know. I I guess no, I don't think it's it's unfair to I'm say him because he does say that Vader is his pupil. So mm -hmm. yeah, he was know, a pupil of mine before yeah. he turned evil. Right. So. So yeah, again, like that performance is even stronger. I mean, I, I, I mean, Obi Wan is my favorite character by far in the Star Wars universe, and I don't think there's any. But I mean, there couldn't be two better actors to play 
that role than, yeah. <laughs> than Alec Guinness and, and Ewan McGregor. Yeah, so I, agree. I, I agree. It'd be nice to see more. It'd really be nice to see more. But if we don't have any more, you know, I'm happy with what we got. So. I would love an Obi-Wan movie. Yeah. I would love an, an Obi-Wan, like a middle-aged Ewan McGregor, in the Obi-Wan desert? in the desert, watching over a young Luke and Owen and Beru. It's too late. You think It's definitely too late to do pre-Clone Wars Obi-Wan at this point. With right? Ewan McGregor. Yeah. With Ewan McGregor. You yeah, think you could do Clone Wars era Ewan McGregor? No, nah, he's too old, man. Have you said, like, I've seen pictures yeah, of him. He's doing train spotting, too. Oh, and, he, that's true. I mean, and he looks middle aged now. I mean, he's, he's, he looks like me now, like, just yeah. not as fat. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's in his 40s, clearly. Like, yeah. He's still a great looking guy, you know, a leading actor guy, but yeah, I mean, he couldn't pull off 20. Yeah, I guess you're right. Ah, that, 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 the, 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 the sarcastic, uh, sort of arrogant Obi Wan is very is a very fun Obi Wan too. Well, we got that in Clone Wars. We though. do. It, 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 it's one of my favorite things. Like so, I I also you know moving moving on a little bit from from the comics because uh, definitely check out that Obi Wan and Anakin comic. Um, I just watched the story reels for eight episodes of Clone Wars that hadn't been adapted. I just finished up my chronological rewatch of all Clone Wars just in time because I think today they're taking down the episodes from Netflix. Uh, but Do we, Are they going to be anywhere? I don't... I mean, you can buy them on Amazon Video. But they're not going to be streaming anywhere necessarily. Not for free. Not not as part of a subscription. I don't. Th- I don't think so. I don't. It's think not like Hulu's, they're going to Hulu. Or I don't think anything so. Like that. I don't think so. I'm not aware. I mean, I'm, I'm sure XD. we'll hear something. Is soon. Disney XD going to host them? Uh, they don't have a subscription service, and it like well, I don't think Disney has the rights to that too because that's before Clone Wars got canceled when the Disney purchase happened. So. I don't know how that deal works out, and if that's a separate thing, maybe that's a Fox. Uh, maybe the Fox has some ownership in that p- potentially. Why would Fox have ownership? Well, in Fox that? had a, all the distrib- did all the distribution for Star Wars up until that point because they uh, distributed because they did the Clone Wars theater movie, right. like the one that kicked off the series. So now maybe because of TV, I don't I don't know. I mean, Cartoon Network is. Is who had who obvi- who broadcasted that, and then Netflix had the last series. So I wonder if I have a I have a feeling the last season of Clone Wars will, would still be on Netflix since that was a Netflix original technically. Um, but maybe the other the first five seasons, I like I don't know how that would work. Where they where they'd go like Adult Swim? <laughs> I, I don't think Cartoon Network is in any rush to take them back. They didn't. It, they don't seem to be caring. They don't care about. You know, other so was, well, because Disney much. XD now has Rebels, so I was like, maybe they'll end up there. Yeah, I, yeah, that's an interesting thing because it's not like because Rebels hasn't made it onto any streaming services either. No, so you have to buy those episodes if you want them. Which I watch been, it while it's happening. Yeah, I've been considering buying them because there have been a couple moments where I want to go back and watch like certain moments here or there. I've like I've, I I keep on wanting to go back and watch the uh, the Anakin Ahsoka. Yeah, but I also there the, also the the finale. Uh, like there's some there were some episodes uh, before. Like there was there was an episode where you see the ghost of the Inquisitor, uh, leading up to that series. I don't know if you remember that mm-hmm, that particular mm-hmm, episode, but mm-hmm. there were a couple episodes like that that I've been wanting to watch. And you mm-hmm. know some some of some of the build to those moments, the big story arcs yeah. that, that's been happening, not just the small stories, but the 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 lore. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I th- yeah I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. That they've been that they've been working with, um, but g- coming back to those story reels, I mean they're they're you know partially animated and rough, but they've got the they've got the voice actors on it. It's it's really interesting uh, because there's a four arc episode on Utapau, which is the the planet where that Obi Wan's attacked on during Order sixty six, um, where they are trying to intercept the sail. Of this uh, this super weapon that's on the market that that Grievous is trying to buy, and it's it's actually the a giant Kyber crystal that's going to be part of like the early versions of the Death Star. So you already so they have some like early Death Star building going on there, um, and and James Hong Hong is uh, is a voice in there, so he's always fun, always great too. Uh, <laughs> this like really like annoying merchant that's like trying to backstab everyone and try to get the best deal that's really <laughs> a lot of fun um and then there's another four episodes 
uh, called the Bad Batch, and they're basically like the special ops of clones. Like basic, like one guy is basically Rambo. Like he even has like the headband and everything. <laughs> but like it's it, it's it's a really cool concept. It would have been cool to see you know your special ops like you know like to to do your you know to do the dirty work to do the the special missions that nobody else can do. Like it's so over the top, but it, it's fun because like I think that's you know it, it's interesting with these movies and these stories. You know, Star Wars has has become in some ways has to. Re- has had to repeat itself, but it's cool with the with Clone Wars and Rebels getting to see, you know, a lot of what Star Wars originally did and being the pastiche and sort of the allusion to other stories being told and mixing and matching other other stories that that have happened. You know, Seven Samurai or In Fortress and you know all these other you know all, like you know all these westerns and all these other things that. Uh, that Star Wars that have like these different pieces that have made Star Wars, all the serials that ha- have that that they've alluded to. So it's cool seeing them still get a chance to do that and allude to other stories with these kind of with these kind of uh, um, you know with the, with these kind with this through this medium. Whereas you know I think you know the complaint of about Force Awakens just being a repeat of 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 A New Hope is sort of an issue of well. <laughs> I mean, is, has Star Wars gone on so long that now it has to repeat itself? I don't think it's gone on so long. I mean, I just think that that's the story that needed to be told for that specific movie. Now we'll yeah. see. Um, and we've had this conversation dozens of times yeah. on, on this podcast. And I, I love Force Awakens, and I don't think it's just a reha- complete rehash of A New Hope. But I, I know that's the common argument. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people felt that way, and I, and I get that. I, I think it's the movie that had to be made to reboot the series, to let everybody know Star Wars is back. It's in good hands. Disney has it. They know what they're doing. They understand. See, the problem is, is if you go right off into making a different type of movie that like gets away from Jedi and gets away from, you know, planet ending destruction and giant empire, you know, galactic empires fighting amongst each other, um, you, you're not really in the Star Wars universe. Like, you're like, oh, is this Star Trek? Is this Aliens? Like, what? Like, you needed to have that familiarity. And I think, like, that's sort of uh, one of the problems that Star Wars is going to face over the next couple of years of, like, how many times can we go to that well before we are tired of seeing the same type of movie? And because of the nature of what Star Wars is, it doesn't allow as much freedom. I'm not going to say you can't expand out. We've seen it expanded out. But you can't get too far. I don't think you can get too far away before you're like, oh, like it, this could have been any movie. This didn't have to be a Star Wars movie. Like they just slapped a Star Wars title on it to sell it. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be. I think it. I think it does have to have lightsabers. I think it does have to have, you know, Jedi, and it does have to have Sith, and it does have to have the Force in some sort of manner in so? order for it to be Star Wars. Yeah. Do you, so it's like if, Doctor Who without the TARDIS. Well, but what what if you're doing a bounty hunter story? Do you need that? To some degree, you have to have touchstones of it so that it's you're still reminded that it's a, you're in the Star Wars universe. If you're just doing just bounty hunters and they're just hunting bad guys with laser guns, that could be Starship Troopers. That could be any universe. It doesn't have to be Star Wars. Yeah, like. And I know what you're, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I, you can't go too far away from that base easily before you go, I don't know, I, I guess it was a Star Wars movie. Right. <laughs> I mean, it had Star Wars in the title, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's interesting because, you know, I, you know, reading the, the Lando comic, for example, or the Chewie comic, um, there were there no there's no Jedi there's no Sith no but those are two very iconic Star Wars characters you change that f- to any uh, like you change it from 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 Chewbacca to to a completely unknown character who's not a Wookiee okay yeah and you're like fair. what the fuck is this story it's not Star Wars <laughs> right right like that that's the problem that's okay. the problem that Star Wars has I okay I can I can see that that argument and I can it, I I think. But then how do you go about creating new and interesting characters? Because comics do, do you know, are able to do this sometimes, you know, we, we saw, 
we we saw a Miss Marvel that's created, and yes, there are similarities to Spider Man, and then you're using uh, a familiar franchise as well to introduce this character. But she's a totally new and original character. Yeah, but there's been like 75 other new and original characters that didn't work before her. But do, so, don't you think that's part of the process yeah, of expanding totally. out the universe? Totally. Universe? But the problem is, is that the difference is, is that in a comic book, like you can afford to you have afford to 75 different characters. When you're, you know, spending 150 million dollars on a blockbuster movie, you don't get that opportunity as much. So now, now. But don't you think the process of creating new stories with familiar characters will create other characters, side characters that that can then and based on their popularity, you can spin them out into that's their the own hope. Stories. Yeah, totally. That's the hope. I right. mean, that that's the goal is right. that you can create more Boba Fett's. Right. 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 Well, like, like for example, you know, we mentioned the Darth Vader comic. Doctor Afra is right. is a is a character Huge that's character. become incredibly popular. Is now headlining her own comic as well, and a character that I could easily say see take the jump to to the movies as well, and has you know connections to the underworld and has sort of an Indiana a, like a, like a dark Indiana Jones vibe to her, right? Which could be She's like, like Laura Croft if she was badass, exactly. <laughs> But like I think like that that would be a very interesting character to, for sure. to explore in a movie. For sure. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh but again, like you wouldn't like I you wouldn't want to have a movie where she isn't hunting down some sort of Jedi or Sith related object or or something like that. Like you wouldn't just have her like Oh, and this or something is, related to the Empire or Right. Or you gotta Republic. still okay. ground it. In enough familiarity that you're still not too far away right. from familiar turf yeah. when, when you're talking about an hour and a half movie that's going to come out every other every year or every other year. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, there's just not. I don't think you can venture too far away from it. Ultimately, I'm, which yeah, is fine, which right. is totally okay. Then, if, if that's the case, I would I would hope that people would will stop complaining about little things like. Yeah, you because know, there were a lot of complaints about like Rogue One being the story of just the Death Star plans, how the Death Star plans got to yeah, you know, and yeah. and they, you still continue to hear that criticism. But I don't know what people want to see. Like they want yeah. like oh, I just want to see like new aliens, and I want to see new ships. Okay, well then, all right, go watch the new aliens movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> it doesn't need, and put a Star Wars title on it. Like, just pretend you're watching a Star Wars movie. Like <laughs> it's not, it's not Star Wars. It does not necessarily what Star Wars is like. To me, like Star Wars has like a very set parameter, a very set guideline of what it is. It's a little bit campy. It's a little bit cheesy. Yeah. It, and, and it's a lot of fun. It's swashbuckling and it's a callback to a lot of other different types of movies like you just mentioned. And it's not necessarily like I, I think like Logan is getting a lot of praise and we gave Logan a ton of praise because it's it's give, you know, it's moved into this new territory and it set the bar high for what comic books movies could be. Well, and it was the appropriate story to tell for that character. I think that's more important than any of those other right. aspects. Of like it. you know, my my fear is that er, like and I don't think Marvel will make this mistake, but I can see Fox and certainly DC making this mistake of like well, Logan and Deadpool were kind of off the beaten path, so let's make every movie off the beaten path. <laughs> right. And we're just going to try shit. Yeah. And, see, and you're just going to end up, like, trying... Well, you're going to so end up... You say up, that, but that, that doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> it's okay. There's going to be some failures. There's going to be a lot of failures yeah. based on, on that track record. I mean... Because I think, like, then what you have to do is, like, you got to, like, really scale back your expectations of what some of these movies are. Like, right. like, like a, a $30 million Batman movie would be the greatest thing ever. Right. I don't need another $100 million Batman movie. Yeah, like, oh, I absolutely. Need, I need a crime drama with Batman in it. Right. Like, that would be fascinating. Like, make it a good noir piece. I don't need huge explosions and stuff. Like, okay, stuff like that will totally work. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be, it's a quick sidetrack into X-Men territory for a moment, but I was actually just reading today. Simon Kinberg was talking about who's been attached to, who's been attached and produced a lot of the different X-Men movies, some good, some bad. Um, he's also had connections to a lot of star Wars as well. Um, but he was talking about some of the next X-Men movies that are coming up after Logan. And, you know, uh, he, he mentioned that essentially that they're made that these that he's concentrating on each movie individually instead of making them part of a connected universe. 
I love that idea. I'm all for it. I that. love that idea. And I think that's what these movies need. I think DC really needs to do that too. I think Marvel Marvel knows how is doing a good job at making their the, the MCU and I'm enjoying it. I view it as a big TV series, so I don't have a lot of the complaints that some people do about, you know, soundtracks or, you know, certain things feeling kind of the same. Like I never complained about two episodes of a TV series feeling the same. But that's because I view this as again as a big TV series. If you're looking at these as individual With a cliffhanger movies, every year. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, but the way they build, it's kind of like the way a satisfying, you know, season finale should ha- mm-hmm. should be, you know. Yeah. Enough enough of a res- uh, resolution, but still building towards another Something season, bigger, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So, like that that's what these movies feel like to me. Um that's a great analogy, by the way. That's <laughs> a really good analogy. Yeah, people need to calm down about the MCU. <laughs> they really do, and they need and they need to be more cl- critical of the DCU. Well, if something's doing well, they're gonna they're gonna critique people are it. just haters. <laughs> Gotta hate the internet right now. <laughs> um, well, coming so, but I think I think that's something that Star Wars, like I'm fa- like yes, it's a connected universe. It's it's not building in the same way that the MCU is doing because it's not necess- like, other than the saga. They're not telling a continuous It's not going stories. to an event. Right. Right. They're not building to a big event necessarily. Um, but I think the X-Men movies could really benefit from that. I think they have enough, a diverse set of characters that they can afford to do that. And we already talked about that on that. Oh, you look, look at what, what Fox is doing with Legion. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's completely standalone. You don't have any familiar mutants well, and, by and, name, but it is fantastic storytelling. And the other uh, X Men show that I I'm actually I know you, as soon as you heard Brian Singer was attached to it, I know you you got you were not happy, but I'm actually I'm excited about that show because Matt Nix is the showrunner for that show, and I have wanted he is who I want to do a heroes for hire show, like more comedy focused version of uh, a little more action comedy version of uh, Luke Cage and iron fist. But he's the guy I would want to do that. Cause he, he's the guy who did burn notice and, uh, and a couple other shows that, that I like a lot that, of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. He like, he gets that dynamic. He, he knows how to tell fun action with some good personal stakes, but you know, keep it fun and, and refreshing as well. Um, but yeah, that's that. That, so I'm excited about that series too. I'm See looking forward goes. to seeing that pilot. See where it goes. But um, coming, let's come back just to those really back into Star Wars right now. So you know we we're talking about expanding out the universe, and of course there's a there was a little piece of news about a very uh, significant character and his fate, uh, and it was sort of a weird. W- Weird thing to do. It's it's in one of the the recent books. I think one of the there's been a series of aftermath, an aftermath books. book. Yeah, yeah following uh, Return of the Jedi, sort of the bridging the in between for Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. And the, 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 we're not we're not fans of the books necessarily. I'm right now going through the audio book of Dark Disciple, which is about Asajj Ventress. Uh, also because that's like at the tail, it, these were, uh, they were adaptations of episodes that were supposed to be in the, the last season of Clone Wars that then got turned into this book. And man, I'm having a rough time <laughs> with it. These books aren't good. They're moments I enjoy, but they are so few and far between. That's yeah. the problem I'm having. Um, so I, so, so I'm happy that I'm at least getting resolution to her character. Another character got their fate resolved. Sort <laughs> do, of. Do you want it to? This is bullshit, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm just going to call it what it is. It's bullshit. This is fan service, right? To, to, to put this in there. There's, it, by all accounts, it serves no purpose in the story. It's just like sort of a throwaway, like two page yeah. little story of like of Jar Jar Binks and what happened to Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, <laughs> and that he's blamed by all the Gungans uh, for his role in enabling the Empire to take hold. And he's now a street performer begging for food and money on the streets of Naboo. I didn't realize the Gungans followed politics that closely. It didn't right? feel like they no, did. it certainly didn't. It was like they were a kind of isolationist under the. They didn't even really talk to the people on their own planet. Now right. all of a sudden they <laughs> care like about galactic. <laughs> yeah, like. Oh, to be fair, in the Clone Wars, the the Gungans do come to the aid of the Mon Calamari. Of course they do, because yeah. uh, you know they. <laughs> Lucas had a hard on for the Gungans. Look, I, I don't like this. I I'm a Darth Jar Jar believer. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, calm down. Uh, I am. I'm a Darth Jar Jar believer. Uh, so this just doesn't make any sense to me. This is and, and the fact that it's quote unquote canon now. Yeah. Is, is you it's know the fan is, service. The fans it's have been stupid. asking for this for basically have been asking for this for a long time. So I'm not surprised. But uh, at least they did. At least Darth Jar Jar is put to bed. At least they did it in a shit story instead of <laughs> putting it in the movie somewhere. No, like, yeah, that's true. That's true. We didn't need to see him on screen again. And I actually like I I've actually cooled off on my hate of Jar Jar uh, as I did my rewatch of Clone Wars. There there were some like there were actually some decent moments with him, uh, you know. But he's still you know still in an absolute it's annoyance. Just a disaster but, of a character. Yeah, a disaster of a character. Yeah. Of like clearly there was a bigger intention for this character, and just the the fan backlash on this thing just derailed whatever they had planned for him. Whether it was him being a dark lord. Or him just being, <laughs> All right, calm down or, with your Dark Lord theory. Or him, it's a that's a compelling argument, dude. It's a more compelling argument than Mace being Snoke, and you completely were like, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> well, well, actually, let's bridge this into the next conversation. So, our our my new Snoke theory, definitely brand new character. Okay. Uh, as much as I'd like a Snoka. Uh, hashtag <laughs> Asnoka lives. Uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> and, and I like the Mace Window theory too. If, if it turned out to be Mace Window, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But uh, I, I mean, it makes no damn sense. Uh, to be perfectly honest, not really. Yeah, and and it, and it, it's it would be an honestly underwhelming in some way if it is some character that we've already seen. I think a brand new villain with brand new motivations. Or motivations that are far more cosmic in nature or bigger in nature, I think, would make him more interesting. And right. that's why – so I've been noticing a couple things. You know, you, you mentioned – we met, talked about in Aftermath. There's mm-hmm. the reference to uh, Jar Jar. There's also a reference to uh, – I, I, there, there was a piece of poetry from, I think, the Journal of the Wills. Right. And if, you, if you're not familiar with the Wills um, – it was sort of an early version of it was it was a, it was an, basically an early one like an early subtitle to the original Star Wars because mm-hmm. Lucas imagined that there were these that these stories were being told to us by the Wills who were sort of like these guardians watchers who wouldn't necessarily interfere with the events of the galaxy but were telling us these stories. Uh, it kind of switched later to being R two is kind of the storyteller, uh, but that has to uh, that. It seems like that's got to change now that we're getting into uh, as we get further into the saga. Um, But the wills have been coming up a little bit more. So that Journal of the Wills uh, bit of poetry had the actually a a little piece of pretty important Jedi philosophy and also the title of our own show. But talking about the the nature of evil and perspective and the the phrase certain point of view which you know obviously obi-wan is known for is part is in that so it's sort of like a jedi scripture that obi-wan would have been in a in a way referencing when he 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 when he lies yeah when when he lies to luke (laughs) (laughs) um my thought is so so it's adding to that Rogue One also included the Guardians of the Wills. You know, Chirrut Mwe and and Baze Malbus were both uh at this temple that was uh, on a planet that while it is important to the Jedi, it's also important to many other force users and force worshipers and sort of different churches and different schools of, of faith that worship the force. Uh you know, if, as you kind of explore different species the the the, my character's uh, species of the keldor in our star wars rpg has like a totally different perspective on the force and and its nature so it's kind of interesting seeing that from the old lore and it's kind of seeing it filled out in a new way with the new lore and the wills keep on coming up uh so i have a feeling that snoke might be one of these guardian watcher types that has decided to interfere with the events of the galaxy. Mm. Well, he does have that interesting line of like, I watched the, the Empire rise, rise and, and the fall of the Empire. Right. Which is why that's so like thinking about that and the nature of the wills being these watchers who were telling us these stories. 
and him being sort of otherworldly. There's also a uh, reference to Snoke being sort of viewed as a radical sort of just a crazy guy, but from further out in the, uh, like even further past out of the, the outer, outer rim. rim. Yeah. Past yeah. the outer rim. So he is not part of like some of the, of the core worlds or the, even the, the, the outer rim. He is definitely more foreign and, and people don't necessarily know, like or people understand know who his he motivations. is. They're, they're aware of him, but they're not, sh- yeah, they're not quite sure of his identity. This is not like, like I don't expect us to get a whole planet of, uh, of wherever Snoke the hell he's species. from. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, and and he see like even like in his sort of design from what we can see from the hologram, he has that like sort of like a dark version of Uatu the Watcher from Marvel, mm-hmm. you know, from mm-hmm. Marvel the Lord. Big head eyes, exactly yeah. like that, like that sort of like it had that kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. So very like, large, right, In his display, m- much yeah. larger than life, but like kind of like ethereal, weird, yeah, yeah, ethereal, <laughs> and, and yeah. So so I, I like I have a feeling he like this is sort of maybe like. His, like the embodiment of the dark, the dark side. Uh, the, I think there was also something I was reading about Palpatine wanting to search for something that was further out of the galaxy, of the, the source of the dark side, and maybe that it, that he and he sent out some sort of expedition uh, that I think was I don't know if this was before his death or it was triggered by his death. But that went out to seek what was out there to find the source of the dark side. Hmm. So maybe Snoke is what they found. You know, like I, I like this is starting. Like it's starting. Like I'm starting to feel a little bit more like this could. This might. This actually makes a lot be. of sense. And honestly, you know, based on what we were talking about earlier, what this does, if if you're correct, and, the, and that's the direction they're going, what it does now is it opens up the Star Wars galaxy a lot more significantly significantly to get away from Jedi Sith and and a lot of familiar territory. If you're introducing like a whole new real true identity and religion to the Force that's not Jedi and Sith but also uh, you know you can you can now you can start branching out a lot more and you're not boxed into having to constantly tell these same stories over and over right. again. It's very smart. I like your idea. I think it makes sense. Uh, you know um, I mean, who knows when we get to this? Curious movie. to see, like what what he was referring to. If if you're right, like what's he referring to about about Kylo finishing Kylo Ren's training, right? And what are the Knights of Ren, and what did they do, and what did they really truly believe? Like uh, that, all that stuff has to be answered yet, and I'm sure a lot of it'll be in books, which is going to piss me off. I actually think a lot more is going to be in the movies than we expect, because because you know there's a lot of comparisons to this next movie to Empire in terms well, of well, that's its the function. expectation. Well, yeah, but even in function, as far as we don't know, we haven't seen anything. Well, see, I mean, I mean okay, granted, we'll, we'll we you know we're there is the expectation of what L- Luke and and. Um, Luke and Ray will be up to, but what if we totally get like the dark side version of, of Snoke training Kylo Ren, like this dark side version of, of like of Luke's of, training with yeah, Yoda, Luke's training with Yoda, except with Snoke and and Kylo Ren. You know, that would be an interesting choice. I mean, carrying <laughs> carrying Snoke on his back would be a major <laughs> issue. You know, a lot of passion for that. <laughs> I mean. If he's just having to lug the hologram around, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, so it'll it'll be interesting to see see what what this movie. I does. can't believe we haven't gotten a trailer yet. I thought for sure we'd get a trailer. With we Logan. didn't get a Rogue One trailer until um, Celebration last year. I know, I know. Yeah. And that's it's the next gonna, month. This is going to be yeah. This is, I think this is going to be the mo from now on. I know, I know it makes sense that they could like Super Bowl they could release a trailer, but I think from here on out. Celebration, celebration, pimp in celebration. April, yeah, exactly. Is going to be when we start getting the our first trailer, and then you know, a couple months down the road, we'll get get another one. Probably maybe at Comic Con, potentially get a second a second one. Um, but yeah, so that that's when we're expecting the trailer. So it's funny there was a fake trailer going around today, and a bunch of people are like excited about it. Like and, fake. And, and yeah, I know, and I can tell. Like I don't like I don't want to rain on their parade. I just want to let them enjoy it because they're just enjoying Star Wars. But it's also like that third shot is clearly not Star Wars, you know? Yeah. Or that like that's clearly a fan film. Like yeah, if you yeah. just looked at it for a moment, just pay attention yeah. for a second. Yeah. <laughs> pay attention to the music. There's no Star Wars music in it. Exactly. Yeah. None <laughs> yeah. at all. None yeah. at all. Um, 
So but it was really well done. It was. It, it was, was really well, it was cool. Fairly well edited. It's not the best fake trailer I've seen. There have been some other it cool ones. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, I think it's just because we're so so desperate for Star yeah. Wars at this point. <laughs> uh, I w- I will uh, moving on from that. You know, talking continuing Last Jedi and sort of it's you know maybe you know a lot of there's been a lot of talk about re- redefining the Star Wars galaxy has been a big a lot of the the hype surrounding this movie. Um, there has J.J. Uh, Abrams, I think, was it? Or did Ryan John? I don't remember who said it. But apparently they said that this movie is going to be Oscar worthy. Uh, well, they said... Uh, or Mark Hamill's Mark performance. Hamill's performance will be Oscar, is Oscar worthy. Yeah. Well, first off, we know the, that there, Star Wars is never going to win anything but a technical award from an uh, Special from effects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Which, like, I, I'm like, I'm done caring about the Oscars. Like, this whole oh, DC... Oh, I stopped caring about the Oscars years and years and yeah, years ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such political bullshit. I don't remember the last time I actually watched the Oscars, to I be honest. I could care less anymore. Uh, it does not matter. It's <laughs> never the best movie. It's never the best performance. Yeah. It's always just, like... What they think they should say. Right. You know, right. it always feels so forced and so <laughs> fake, which, yeah. I mean, it is Hollywood, so. So it makes sense. It's yeah. accurate. Yeah. And, I mean, usually if it has something to do with showbiz, of course, it's going to get a little bit more hype because, you know, they love themselves. Oh, so, so. much. It's so masturbatory. <laughs> it's just, I can't do it. I just can't yeah. do it. But uh, it's it's funny hearing that. It feels like it's just pure hype for the movie at this point because I can't. Might imagine. be. Although you know what? As I was watching Logan, yeah, and I was watching Hugh Jackman's performance, I was like, this, like, this is Oscar performance stuff it's that he's gonna, giving. It, it is. Is it gonna get the nod? N- Probably not. I don't think it will. But it's really good. Like the fact that we're getting that level of performance in nerd culture films. Is pretty impressive. Like if we if they keep putting stuff out like that, like I kind of feel like eventually the walls have to come down as some of these older members of of the Oscar committee like start dying off. And you and think it has to do with the older members? I don't think it has anything to do with the older members. I think I think that yeah, I think that there's sort of a. You think the, the younger members of the Academy would vote for a superhero movie? Because I think yeah. there's just as much. I think there's a better chance of it. I think there's a better chance of it than there is. From you know some ninety year old guy who you know <laughs> remembers Errol Flynn like you know <laughs> okay, that's fair <laughs> it's like yeah I I think there's I think there's opportunity as time goes on I don't think it's happening this year yeah. but I would love to see Hugh Jackman and I and we, I mean we don't we don't we haven't even seen a trailer who knows how good Mark Hamill's performance really is right but it would be great to see him get recognized it would it would and and even to be mentioned i think is is fantastic i think i love that guy i think for me he's in that category of like adam west and uh stan lee where they're these nerd gods that the people who care about them are gonna love them you know they're never gonna get any real recognition as as amazing as they are, I mean the guys. Not until they're dead for some reason. Yeah, yeah. and then they'll be like, a, "We was great. We really loved him." <laughs> yeah, well, you never said it when he was alive, <laughs> <Right>. you jackass. <laughs> you treated him like shit the entire time. I mean, he's he's an amazing voice actor. Like, oh, my brilliant. my favorite by far. And yeah, it, it would it would be nice. It would be nice to see him recognized. I just. I, I'm just skeptical of it happening. Well, you know? yeah, it's a little early to be saying Oscar. Like, let's <laughs> yeah, let's see the movie first. <laughs> yeah, I, have they even finished editing it yet? No, they're reshooting. Right yeah, now. so <laughs> slow down, slow down, JJ, <laughs> slow down. And, and he's not even the one directing the movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which means, I mean, it's executive weird if Ryan produ- Johnson was saying, exec- oh, this is Oscar worthy. But he is executive producing. He's that's seen true. everything that's gone on so far. But just calm down, JJ. <laughs> calm down. Uh, well, so we're going to wrap up with our last piece of our, our discussion is going to be about the recent episodes of Rebels. Uh, we're, we're not going to do season wrap up episodes of Rebels anymore. But as as cool as really good episodes of Rebels come out, we'll we'll just talk about them. We have been fortunate to, to have a good string of them. There, we've had some really cool Mandalorian lore episodes, but the last two episodes that we've watched have been absolutely uh, great, building up to uh, uh, some really cool places with Thrawn right now. Uh, and we we had an episode with Fulcrum or Ka- Agent Callus called Through Imperial Eyes, and then we also had uh, another episode just recently. I can't remember the title, but it was about the secret Mon package Mothma. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I forget yeah, what it was called. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot the name of it, but it, it dealt with the actual birth 
of the Rebel Alliance, like this really significant moment and sort of the, the, the nature of the Rebel Alliance. But man, I am... I'm really excited as this the series continues. We got three more episodes for the rest of the season after this. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts? With it's been a slow episodes? burn with Thrawn. Yeah, like it has been a real slow build up to him becoming more and more of a badass. Yeah, and that Agent Callus episode uh, was sort of like the turning point for me, where I was like, okay, and now I'm excited for Thrawn again. Well, we got because to see him as a physical threat. Too. Yeah, we see him as a physical threat, and we see him as a mental, like where the chess game that he's playing, at, like and him outmaneuvering everybody along the way. Like he's been kind of like just sort of watching and just taking it all in. Yeah, which makes total sense. You kind of need that build. You up do Thrawn. need that build up, and and. But it wasn't exciting to watch, and it didn't like make you feel like this guy was really all that much until yeah. I guess that I enjoyed episode. it. But I know you, I enjoyed you it, too. but I was just like, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, you know, like let's do something. Like now, like they made that turn for him, like, and it was brilliant, like how he figured everything out with Callus and how he played that so masterfully. And you're right, we see him as a physical threat as well, which I don't think is really all that important. Well, but it's also nice to see because, you know, it's also to, it's also good to know that, you know, the mo the moment like Kanan shows up with a lightsaber, it isn't like, oh, no, this guy's going to be a sniveling villain that cowers away like this guy can hold his own, you I know, yes, I kind of I don't know. I kind of did just want him to be cerebral. I didn't Purely need him. Cerebral. Yeah, I didn't yeah. need him to be a physical threat. Yeah, and but and but to use his mind to outmaneuver all of his opponents yeah. so that they could like their brute strength wasn't going to work against him. Yeah. Well, I did enjoy him fighting the assassin droids that were let loose on him. And that was a very cool to, moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but because even in his fighting style, he is very clever. You know, yeah. it is. He's he's not. He's very he's still very methodical and that's mm -hmm. reflected in his character which I like that touch that it's not just like and now all of a sudden he's Rambo you know and shooting it all up just berserking and crushing yeah. everything yeah <laughs> um so so we've got three you know three episodes from where we are right now I'm kind of thinking that we're going to see the beginning of Thrawn's plans put into action in the season finale but I think we're going to spend another season with Thrawn. Instead oh, yeah. Of, Most deaf. Yeah. I don't think he's he's not a one-off villain for the season, the way they kind of treated the Inquisitor and then the... the At least I hope not. Yeah. I hope like we don't get rid of Thrawn already. I'm really yeah. enjoying like his rise. Uh, and I, I hope want he him survives. To, yeah, I want I actually, him to stay into next season and be yeah. a threat next season as well. well. And, and I, I actually really do hope that he survives the series... So that he is a continued threat in the Star Wars universe. So that, like somewhere else in the galaxy, where another part of the Rebel Alliance is operating, he's like he's still he's still the guy. Yeah. Havoc. He's still a guy to, to be reckoned with. It's not just Vader, yeah. and Tarkin. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing him be someone like in the like after Return of the Jedi that the that the Rebel Alliance still has to deal with. Yeah. So as, cause you, we know that the, the, you know, the, the fight doesn't end at Endor. We know that I think Jakku is either the last battle or one of the last battles of the, of the, of the war. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what, you know, how, how else they can gets. use his character. Yeah. Um, I know his book is coming out soon, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm trying to get through not that I'll read books. it. Not that I'll read it. That's just such a bad idea. I, this one thing that star Wars is doing that I don't like world of Warcraft tried this too, where they were oh, like, yeah. oh, we're going to have like really important pieces of lore in our book. Do you think it's really important pieces of lore though? With I feel star like, Wars? Uh, I, I don't feel it's been re like, I feel like you can still watch the movies and not feel like you've missed out on something. For sure, and you can still play the video game and not you, feel like you no, missed no, but out. But you do feel like with Warcraft, we had those issues where we did feel like we missed out on something. I feel like you're missing out on stuff by not reading the books for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I don't oh. feel that way about the comic books. I think you can get away right now. Right now, you can get away with the com without reading the comic books. Yeah. And, and not miss anything. Yeah. It I, adds a lot of color for sure. Yeah. But I do feel like they're like. Really sig but see, I think I, they're trying to make the books a lot more significant. Yeah, I, I haven't felt that. I, I don't feel. There's well, you've any only detail. read you've only read Ventress's story. Yeah, and I, but I've I've found out about like pieces of information, but I've never felt like like oh, like that's it's like it's cool information, but it's never changed my opinion of the movie. Right, right. But I I think that you know more and more there's going to be pieces of lore like you know 
Snoke. Like there's going to be hints about Snoke and stuff like that. But it's just like it colors in it colors in the stuff. Yes, you'll still be able to understand the movie on its own. Yeah. But I feel like they're trying to look. Let's be honest. Star Wars is all about merchandising. Well, you just mentioned coloring in the lines, but you said that was a good thing with the comics earlier in this episode. It is, but it, it can, you know coloring in the lines can also veer into like. Being well, too significant. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be too significant. Yeah, and I think like they're trying. Like I mean, I think they're walking that line of like we want you to buy more stuff. We want you to buy books. We want you to buy comic books. We want you to buy toys. We, okay, I get it. Like it's you got to make money on this franchise. That's why Disney bought it. I just don't want them to get to a point where they cross that line of like, well, if you're not reading the books and you're not really a fan. You know, like Lord of the Rings. If you haven't read The Similarian, like, you're not really a fan of Lord <laughs> of the Rings, okay? Well, you can watch the Lord of the Rings movies and still... You're not a real fan to a lot of people. If you <laughs> haven't read the books, you're not a real but fan. Do you th- don't you think that's uh, an issue with elitism among nerds? Yeah, for sure. And there's no reason that Star Wars wouldn't take advantage of that. Oh, uh, that's fair. Okay, I can see that. Well, let's come back. So, so also in Rebels, you know, so we, we had a great, you know, we had the perspective with Callus with with um, with Agent Callus and him trying, like, almost breaking him out of um, uh, out of uh, out of the Empire. Yeah, out of the Empire, but him deciding to stay on because he feels, you like know, he's, he's been able to yeah, clear, clear his, his tracks, name yeah. and cover his tracks. But we know he has it. Nope, throws totally onto him, and this he he is not going to meet. A, ni- a nice ending. Probably not. Pro- yeah. I would be disappointed if he did. Yeah, I, th- I think we're going to see some sort of sacrifice from him. Um, but moving on from that, so we had the Mon Mothma episode. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved it. It was cool seeing the factionalism of the the Rebel Alliance, seeing even the tension between different factions. I think that was an aspect that I really liked in Rogue One, mm-hmm. just the the issue of like, they're not De- all in it together necessarily. Th- yeah, well, this is an alliance of necessity, not because these people like each other. But also, you know, Rogue One obviously was a big moment in the official declaration of war. Like that was like the Rebel Alliance was sort of like very unofficially moving until then, and then the uh, the the Battle of Scarif was the full was the actual beginning of the Galactic Civil War. Um, here we have the actual alliance forming. All these different cells have been created by different senators like Mon Mothma and Orga- uh, Organa, and they've been funded, and they've been secretly working in different regions, but now we have them actually gathering at Dantooine, which is a pretty, you know, important planet. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it was, cool. it was cool seeing that happen, that moment happen, and sort of the, the, the effort it took to even get there, you know, traveling through that nebula. There's some really fun, like, cool Star Wars action with, you know, with ships and with TIE fighters and, and Y-Wings. So that was, that was really fun to also see that kind of, that kind of experience in Star Wars as well. Um, what, what were your thoughts with that episode? I was blown away by the art when they blow up the, when they shoot the photon torpedoes into the and nebula take down the, the and take down destroyers. the star destroyers. Yeah. The drawing, the art on that was all so beautiful. Yeah. It was amazing. I, I was marveling at the exact same thing. I was that like, happened. this looks incredible. They spent a lot of money on yeah. that, on that scene to make that look that good. It was incredible. You've got to watch... Have you watched any of the behind-the-scenes, like the Inside Rebels, like Rebels Recon Mm-mm. series on YouTube? I, 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 like I've now made Every that... Every once reg- in a while, but not usually. I've made that sort of a regular part of it now. Like, after I watch the episode of Rebels, I'll watch the, the episode of Rebels Recon. And it's kind of seen, like, even, like, different things that they... You know, different models that, like, they, like the, mo- the, the models that they used in Rebels were sent over to the crew in Rogue One to use for different, you know, uh, for different shots. So... They, they were even like reflecting different shots and different art. And like they, they were talking like Filoni was talking about making sure that the 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 style and the art that they're using in Rebels right now is very similar to Rogue One. And I like I'm glad they're made like I love that they're that taking that extra. Detail. Yeah, that extra bit of effort. Like it just makes everything so much more, you know, part of that universe and and so much more special. Well, it feels it feels like a, like a continuous story. Yeah, you're not like, all right, well, this doesn't really fit right anywhere. Like everything kind of makes sense. Like especially you know through the Clone Wars, 
like how you know and how they integrated that in with the movies and stuff like that and it made sense it kind of fit everything together and you understand how we went from uh, like really shiny, spacey new stuff to A New Hope where everything kind of looks like beaten and run down. Right. Like having that a complete arc now of like, oh, okay, this is why the universe looks the way it does really helps like make it real in my mind. I, I love that. I think that Filoni has done an amazing job. If there was anybody I'd want to see in charge, like definitely, like as as time goes on, I'd love to see Filoni just kind of in charge of everything, because yep. I think he's very like I think he's got that sort of the right sort of creativity that Lucas had during the original trilogy. That same sort of mind of like, all right, like I want to create these interesting and compelling stories, but I also want to have like references to stories that I loved and enjoyed as well. So that there is that fun aspect of Star Wars, but there's also the serious moments. There's it's hitting all the right notes. The yeah. No, yeah, all the right notes for Star Wars. So Yeah, and he gets he gets sort of like the tongue in cheek of Star Wars. Absolutely. He gets sort of the fun of it, like the 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 side sort of wink of like the Han Solo character. Yeah. Uh, you know, he uh, he gets that and he puts that in his in the details of the movie, very detail focused in the same way Lucas was. Um I, and the fact that he was able to spend so many years with Lucas creating Clone Wars and working with, with him on Clone Wars, I think, like, just passed that on to him. And the fact like, – I love Kathleen Kennedy. I think she's great. Yeah. But she's not a filmmaker. She's a producer. Yeah. And she has a great track record with a lot of great movies, too. She, for sure. Right. For sure. I think she's great. I wouldn't – you know, I'm not upset that she's in charge of it. But I think, like, having Filoni, who's an actual filmmaker – and 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 does this like and that's that's what he does. Having him as as an integral part of that team is what's keeping Star Wars on on target. Well, it's good that you know he's now like the director of all animation, not just Rebels, and that we're expecting another series coming up soon. Rebels did get renewed for a fourth season, uh, and and there's got to end that season, right? Well, so there there's there's this is the thing. It could. But there are like there are other rebel factions that could be operating in other parts of space. He like Filoni had mentioned in an interview, I think last year or the year before, that he also imagines like this is a story that like this story could happen at the same time as other stories that were seen as part of the Galactic Civil War. Like he compared it to Lord of the Rings. Like you know that look, there is a story for like like Frodo is over here and Faramir is over here and Aragorn's over here. But there's even a story for over in the north, like what's happening with the dwarves and who they're fighting as part of the overall war of the ring. So there is a bigger picture to the Galactic Civil War. We know Thrawn is operating in other theaters, you know, like if, if you were, it's kind of like, you know, you, World, World War II is a perfect example and has always been a very important part of Star Wars lore too, you know, as, like down to like the style of like the footage that was shot in the war and the way they, they shoot a lot of scenes. But if the European theater is what's happening with Luke, Han, and Leia, then what's happening in the Pacific? With, or Africa. Or- yeah, exactly. So, I mean... I think there has to be... No, here's why it has... It can't be that crew, though. There has to be certain changes to the crew. At the Kanan and Ezra have to either stop pretending to be Jedi. Right. Or Kanan has to die. I think Kanan has to die. I think and that's Ezra kind of essential. And Ezra can't keep calling himself a Jedi. Right. Right. I, yeah, that's Kanan and Ezra are really the only parts that are. How do you like? I don't see like why would you continue that story without Kanan and Ezra? Yeah, I I know I that's a tough. I, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I you think, you just you create a new series. Yeah. You don't keep call. You don't keep doing rebels. Like you create a new series and new characters. And if you want to tell those other stories in other places, fine, that's okay. But that this story has to end this season. Do you think you could have? Ezra stop being a Jedi, uh, stop being a uh, yeah, and go do whatever Ahsoka's doing. Oh no, no, no! Like continue to fight with the Rebel Alliance. And, no, you yeah. can't have a lightsaber. Yeah, no, like say he forget, like he's done with the lightsaber too. No, <laughs> no, he's got to walk away from it. Like he yeah. can't, he just can't. He, he, it doesn't make sense because like the er, like everybody is like kind of surprised that Luke is a Jedi, right? Right. Like it doesn't make sense that there's other guys running around with lightsabers, with lightsabers. absolutely, and using force powers. Yeah, like they just can't. 
Yeah. It just can't be. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be. I, 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 I'm agree, I agree with you definitely on that. It'll be interesting because because I do I do think that season four or season five has to be the last season because yeah they, you can go five yeah they've already well, talked how many, about how long before how long was well, the Rebel Alliance before it, like officially formed which we just saw yeah until the Battle of Scarif well I think there is like two more years before until that until point. Scarif from from where we are in so Rebels there's just right skirmishes now. skirmishes skirmishes for two years and yeah. then. All out war. Right. For two years. Now, there's also been talk of being able of seeing the Battle of Scare from the perspective of the ghost crew. Yeah. So that I mean that could easily be the series finale right there. That's where I would end yeah, it. You know, because I'm not past past sure that. if uh, if the ghost was able to to get out of get out to hyperspace in time at the end of that battle. That would be a heartbreaking way to end the series oh. is that they die at Scarif. Oh my god. That would be insane, wouldn't it? It'd be great. It would be great. You see kids just crying, <laughs> just crying. And Disney jump to, X- to see them crash into. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that, that's a little too dark for even for. Well, yeah, I don't Floney, see that happening. Yeah. I don't see that happening on Disney XD. That's true, but Floney did plan to kill Ahsoka, uh, at one point. Yeah, <laughs> which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll I don't see. know. We'll see. That's a pretty dark way to end the series, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, let us know what you think uh, of the, the state of the Star Wars galaxy right now. Do you think they're expanding it in the right ways? Do you think, like, what what do you want to see? Do you What kind of stories do you want to see? Like, what, what other, do you think, how important is the Force to all Star Wars stories? Let us know uh, what you think. Are there books that you, you do think are worthwhile? Uh, let us know. Just go to our website, certainpov.com. While you're there, check out the Weight Loss Challenge. Check out Patreon if you'd like to be a part of what we're doing on this podcast and of course you can check out all our social media all of it is there on our website certainpov.com and until next week stay scruffy my nerf herders thanks for listening to certain point of view don't miss an episode just subscribe rate and review the podcast on itunes head over to certainpov.com